Good morning in Prague. Um, the presentation doesn't really work the way it should do. I'm just going to scroll through the pictures with an open program. I think it's, it should be okay for this purpose. Um, I would like to develop a number of things that I came through by researching things, um, starting from the topic black goo. Um, if, if you stumble into this topic for the first time, for, for most of the people it is something, something weird, something strange, something that is not um, important within the daily life. Once you um, manage to, to dive into this topic, you can realize that actually most of the things we are doing on daily life basis is driven, changed, ruled by this substance and this topic. So once you manage to understand what black goo is and what it does on this planet, it gives you a completely different understanding of um, the question what rules our life, what turned our planet into the place it is now. And uh, with this understanding of the planet and our history that I tr will try to develop, you also come to complete different conclusions what steps could be taken next to change this world into a better world. I'm going to do this, this a little bit from, um, uh, let's say, uh, the story how I came to deal with the substance and with the topic so that you can just pick it up as a story. And this is something that, that occurred in my life a number of times that actually topics popped up and forced me to deal with them. And with, with the Black Goo topic, it was kind of the same. It started with an invitation of a not so close friend who just phoned me up and told me, Harold, I need to show you a documentary. And he, he was persisting. I didn't feel like I was not interested in the topic, but he made me come to his place at, at, a, at a certain time. And he showed me a documentary he just found on YouTube about the um, real cause or reason behind the Falkland Wars. When Britain went to war against Ar Argentina to reconquer the Falkland Islands. And this was about just, you know, meddling around with the little islands in the official press and there was a behind story telling about um, a black goo reservoir being on um, Tula Island, one of the southern little islands that was basically a substance that was sold on the southern American black market because it was meant to have the ability to host intelligence, like a liquid brain being able to um, build nanobots with swarm intelligence and all, all kind of weird things. So this was a very wanted substance and the Br British people wanted to have this substance for themselves. So they reconquered the islands, brought the substance to Great Britain and then tried to utilize it as let's say, a substance to host artificial intelligence to create uh, nanobots with swarm intelligence. This was their intention, but it completely went wrong according to this documentary and basically the, the substance of the oil already was intelligent and it was inhabited by a very loving being calling herself Mother Earth and she refused to be abused for military purposes. And while trying to still work with this sentient oil, um, the mindset of the people working with it was messed up. So basically uh, the documentary said that half of the people working in these military labs went nuts and committed suicide in very cruel and or funny ways. And the other half kind of saved their own lives by um, 
finding to uh, affirmation saying, please connect me to the one source, which gave them access to the collective consciousness of the planet. Being one with all plants, being one with all animals, being one with all, hum all humans, being able to communicate with every living being on telepathic level. And of course, after having reached this state, there was no sense in developing weapons to control or to go to war anymore. So they had to shut down the labs where they tried to utilize this substance. And that was basically the end of the story told in this documentary. This is like, you, you look at a story, it did not relate to my life back then. I was not further interested in the topic, so I just kind of stored it in the back of my head as something that came across my path. And back at that time, I actually was researching other things. I was re researching the Morgellons disease which is a transhumanistic technology developed by the elites to mind control basically every single human uh, that is infected with this little fungi fibers or mycelium. And um, I was suspecting the Morgellon um, entity being part of German World War II bioweapon research. So I got in contact with people who not did the, the official history bit that is taught about World War II, but that did research underground facilities of World War II times, that went into the mines, into the bunkers, and had one-to-one -one contact with the equipment and the content of these facilities. And I met some of these people just to ask them whether they came across Morgellon research in World War II. And um, sad enough, they did not. I never got answers to those questions I had. But on one of these meetings, one of these guys doing this research just went to his car and came back with a box. And um, what he brought back was this. And he said this is some oil schist he recovered from underground facilities. There was about a ton of this. And he found it to be an interesting mineral. He didn't know what it is. And he said, actually, we, we managed to follow instructions we found to extract the oil from this oil schist. And it behaves funny. So what he found is an oil, oops, okay, here we go, an oil that um, why doesn't it play? Okay, just a sec. I have to get it from somewhere else. So you can see how it is forming a kind of liquid crystal. It is very fluent, but it self-organizes, and it's forming kind of the shape of an insect eye, completely symmetrical. And something that happened on that first meeting, this is kind of the, the second meeting, he had only one of these glasses. With the first meeting, he had two of these plastic containers with two eyes of this kind. And he, he demonstrated how if you put the two eyes in a distance of four to five meters, they started to react on each other, which went like, like 
the two eyes looking at each other first, then realizing, okay, there's something of my thought and I want to unify to one bigger entity. And they started to pull, trying to, to get closer to each other, which did, did not work because they were caught in these containers. So the moment they realized they cannot come closer, they started to fight to try to get out of the pot by shaking and jumping inside the pots. So th this had something of uh, an intelligent being in a liquid form trying to get what it wants to get. Um, okay. Sorry for the mess with the computers. Um, so that was my, my first meeting with a substance that I had seen kind of in this or heard about in the, in the documentary that I heard before, saw, saw before. And I told those people, actually, what you're dealing here looks to me like black goo. And actually, it did have an emotional impact on the people that were in that room. What, what I kind of felt was that I was... Um, I was getting cold-hearted. It was like f a little bit uh, the feeling you get in these big old churches where you freeze and you have some kind of respect that is funny. Um, what happened next is that, that I, I was a little bit in, um, in, in problem with the hotel we had the meeting because they didn't have a room for me that night and I was forced to sleep in the car at two to three degrees, so I was freezing to death, and then I just had a shower in a friend's room who still got a, one of the last rooms available. And the director, of the, the uh, manager of the hotel, started a, f a fight with me because I took a shower, although I didn't pay for a room, just to warm up in the morning. Um, and I realized that I was very, very close to beating the woman up. And I, I just realized that this is not typical for me. Normally, I don't, I don't have the, the intention or the, the need to, to beat women. And um, so I realized just facing this substance um, did something with me. If, if I just felt into myself, normally the heart activity is somewhere here. There was nothing left of this. I could think, I still had some kind of sexuality within me, I had life force, but all the rest was gone. I was like reduced to, to three chakras. So this, this is how it felt like, um, just in my system. Um, and it did not really go together with the description of the entity from the documentary. But back then I had no clue. It just was, you know, there was one type of black goo talking about in, in public in, the, in this documentary, I saw something that resembled the liquid. It had some strange properties as well. And it didn't do me good. So the, the next impulse was um, if you're kind of energetically infected with something on, on information level, uh, what might help, was, that was my thought, was um, um, to develop information medicine to get rid of this state again. So I took a sample of one of these stones and go back to them and uh, drove to my healing practitioner who has all the technology to produce globally as information medicine or radionic medicine or homeopathic medicine. And we, we took the information pattern from the stone and imprinted it on globally following the theory that you can heal things with the information of the disease. You can heal a disease by introducing the information of the disease. So we produced medical globally from this black goo oil schist and I took them in the hope to um, get rid of this funny state of myself being so empathy free and cold hearted. 
And the thing that happened actually was very similar to the thing described by this British documentary of people reconnecting or connecting to Mother Earth. So the funny, the cold state started to disappear from my body. It started from the feet and went up, 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 up. And after like 14 hours it reached my head. And after the coldness was out of my head, like I was completely reconquered by the other field, um, it felt like Mother Earth in person intruding my body from the feet into me, saying hello for the first time since thousands and thousands of years. It was one of the most intense experiences on spiritual level I had to, to open myself to, to this entity that feels like a black whale or felt like a black whale diving into me. And it, it was a really warm welcome in a way. Um, so at that point, it was the first time that I kind of realized that black goo is one substance, but there seem to be two qualities. One with three chakras that make you aggressive, cold-hearted, free of empathy. And one that has the full capacity of this planet, the full emotional set we can experience with love and joy and everything that, that makes us human. Um, so that, that was kind of the, the first experiences I had facing this substance. And then w one, once I've been into the topic, uh, without even looking for it, more evidence came to me like try, trying to understand where this comes from. The next thing that happened is that Majid Abdelaziz, a friend of mine I'm, I'm into desert greening projects with in North Africa, he, he was hired to set up a, a weather station in Paraguay. And actually the area he went to was the area where the Bush family bought that big lot of land to, to have a place to, to, to go to if they lose North America as a family. And he said, funnily enough, our, our Chancellor Angela Merkel has bought a villa just close to Bush, Bush's uh, f farm or, or um, whatever they run down there. And another five kilometers further away from the village where all these big people try to find a place to stay, there was a, a mountain area that was closed by military forces. Nobody was allowed to enter. Unless you're talkative and leave a little bit money here and a little bit money there and make friends with the soldiers. So he was allowed into this area. And what he brought back was this type of stone, which is basically a sandstone with a little, little black droplets inside. He said there were other areas that were completely black the stone was completely black. And from the sensation of this stone, it was very similar to the other black stones I had from the German researcher. It was like getting at your bioenergetics, and it also had this extremely cold and evil aura around it, this stone. And um, to, to, to test if it is really this type of material, all you need is take a little magnet and apply the magnet on the uh, oil schist or on the sandstone. And when you move it on the surface, it's like, it's like shivering. The magnet is interacting on, on, on some unknown level of physics. I, I would, would call it, this is like, like quantum entanglement appearing, creating some gravitational force. So th this is, you can feel it in your fingers that this interaction is happening. At the same um, moment, the magnetic field is kind of also washing out this information field and is strengthening the biophysical connection to the stone. So if you want to have sensations from these stones and you apply magnets, everything is multiplying. It's getting much, much stronger and more intense what the things you feel in the presence of the stone. So it, it was quite easy to, to understand 
uh, that it, it is actually a little black dots on the sandstone is the same material as black goo oil schist as well, or black goo oil dots in sandstone. But the other interesting thing with this one is um, the, the shape of the sample occurs when you have a meteorite coming down from outer space. This, these these um, rectangular structures, the entire area was just cracked in the same way. This is like, like if you have an impact, you have very strong forces working on the stone and the moment kind of it f kicks back, you know, you have pressure and then the pressure is released, then the stone in the environment is breaking or the stone that is coming down is breaking in exactly this way. So we had kind of geological proof that this material is not from this planet because it is connected, it is found at a proven meteorite site. And from there on, I, I basically had um, the basic ideas where and what to look for. Then I started to go a little bit into history to see if there are any records of these stones. And um, what you actually find is a lot of um, sources mentioning these stones being worshipped by black magic cults. If you look into, into the stories told out of this area, basically you have uh, the, the people uh, worshipping these stones, going there once a year, um, sacrificing children in front of the big, big black stones, waiting for the demons to appear out of the stone, to come out of the stone to accept the blood and fire sacrifices. This is what is told um, in this about the black magic tradition. If you go further back, um, you find a piece of this stone being um, of immense importance in Mecca, in the holiest site of the Muslim community. And every pilgrim going there is meant to kiss this stone. And this is not a going against Muslim now because the Peter's Dome in Rome is supposed to have one of these black rocks right in the middle of the big building. So, as it looks like all religious cults, you, you, you can think of maybe ex with an exception of some, some Asian philosophies, they have this stone in the center of their cult, and uh, especially the churches, the old churches in Europe, they all have a black altar stone from this quality, and this is why you do not feel love in a church. This is why you have this cold, shivering feeling when you go inside that it is supposed to kind of give you respect or fear of God more than feeling the love of God at that place. So it is, it is kind of a, a funny thing because at that moment you start to rethink um, if the world you, you were introduced to is actually the way it's, it's been told to you that it is because, um, you know, I always thought people go to church to get closer to God, to become better humans. Same with Muslim people. The philosophy is full of love and respect, actually. But then they go to a holy place and connect themselves to the most evil thing you can imagine. So something I, I started to realize was completely wrong about the perception of our world. And um, so I, I continued a little bit to, to research the history. Let's see what comes next. This, for example, is um, the temple of Aphrodite. Had one of these stones in the center of the cult. If you look into the uh, Eastern cultures, it is called Shiva's Lingam as an occult stone and to protect people from the very strong impact of this evil information field outside of the times when it was in ritual use. They covered it with women's hair to, pro to, to kind of shield and protect the humans in the environment from the impact of the field 
being emitted by the stone. So there you have kind of, in, in the Asian tradition, you have the, the, um, the form it was brought into. It is a typical, a little bit looking like a 60s rocket, space rocket, um, typical form to, to recognize the, 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 um, the, just the form and the, and the, the looking of, of these occult pieces of black goo oil shiz used in former times. And is, interestingly, the next one I came across were Turkish and Greek coins showing the tree of life in paradise, the one the apple was hanging on that Adam was uh, convinced to eat. Um, and left and right of the tree of life in, 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 the, in the paradise garden, we have two Shiva's lingam. And this, this was like going, aha, now, I, now I, I start to understand what happened when we were deteriorated from paradise. This is kind of the, the core, this is the, the point where the core understanding started to come. What actually happened to us? Now, um, thinking that, or realizing that we have obviously two different types of black goo. The Falkland quality that also can be found as mumio in rising mountain areas all over the world. We have it in the southern Russian republics. It's like, like people's medicine to take this, the black oil that is found in caves in rising mountain areas. We have the same thing in the Himalaya region used by Tibetan monks for healing purposes. So we do have this earth type black goo that is loving and friendly and we do have the alien type black goo that came down with meteorites and having these two in mind now imagine let's say 16,000 years ago this is how we, we can kind of date find it, put a date to it a swarm of meteorites came down containing the black goo of a different planet that used to have a different biosphere. And before that, um, actually, on our planet, everything was in order. We, we were a race that had healthy instincts and that was completely connected to the collective consciousness of the planet. Um, if, you, if you feel into it and, and try to, un to understand the quantum physics part of this, of this thing, it's um, um, everything we, everything we um, sense, feel and think actually is happening on biophoton level. A feeling is an exchange of biophotons in an annihilated state of a certain color and certain frequencies and certain patterns in between our DNA clusters. So if I think my brain produces blue light in geometric figures, most of the thinking is like in binary fields. If I, feel, if I've, if I have sexual feelings, then it is a uh, um, red light thing happening with a different geometry that goes in 90 degree angles. If I feel love, it's about green light, green to red purple light with uh, angular structures um, of 30 and 60 degrees. So this is all kind of light exchange within the DNA clusters. And what, what the black goo seems to do on physical level is to collectively mirror all the biophoton exchange happening in the biosphere. Which is interesting because this is like, like we are individuals. Every being on the planet is an individual regarding itself as an individual. But on the other hand, we can connect 
to a sphere that is also having biophoton exchange, and that is mirroring everything that is happening within the biosphere, within an immortal collective consciousness that is within the planet. So this is kind of the, the concept of black goo, how it should be in, on a healthy planet. The black goo, if you, if you look at the cave system and the ri rising mountain areas, it seems to that the black goo is actually the thing that is filling the ley line systems of a planet. And whenever you have rising mountain areas, sometimes ley lines are cut off, and then the oil is coming through the stone, zipping out of the inner walls of cave systems. So th this is kind of like, like you can put the puzzle together to understand how a biosphere should function. And now take an event 16,000 years ago when an alien black goo comes down with meteorites and suddenly the entire biophoton exchange within the biosphere has the, p the possibility to redirect from the earth type black goo to the alien type black goo just because it is, clo it is closer, it was lying on the surface of the planet instead of being at three to five miles depth within the stone. So what happens then is that suddenly we are connected to completely alien instincts. We are connected to something that is giving us the instinct to be cold-hearted, free of empathy, and all the other qualities that can be felt within this oil schist, just by connecting to it and observing yourself what it does with you. If you want to exactly know what it does, just watch the ways of the German SS soldiers during World War II. They used these stones as um, decoration of their knives as something to put on letters so that they don't fly away in the wind. Like they just occ occult substances to, to create things for daily life use. So they're all the time connected to these dark energies. And everybody knows what they did when they were conquering Europe, how cruel they were and how free of empathy. So this is basically what, what must have happened back then. And you, you can you can see this from these coins like showing that actually the act of deterioration from paradise is connected to the, to the use or the, the contact of humanity with this alien black goo oil schist in the garden of paradise. And I don't know how this happens, whether the, the soil around the tree was um, infected by the oil or the, the, the tree itself was connected so the moment you take the apple and eat from the tree you introduce the substances you need to completely entangle yourself um, to the alien collective consciousness. And from there on we, we kind of live in duality. We do have, as humans, we do have a certain possibility to consciously connect to the seven chakra system, be a good human, or we can connect to the other chakra system that is tempting us with the power we gain by doing this, with the cruelty we can live, and the profit we can make by being cruel. So this is all about the physical substances that brought this type of duality onto the planet. Um, just one picture from, from, from the holy site of the Muslim people, the stone they're supposed to touch, also filled with black goo oil schist. And it goes on. Um, in a way that you, you need to realize that actually, if you, if you look in, into the black magic traditions when people went to worship black goose stones and then the demons came out of it. This is something that, that needs further understanding as well. Um, th there is one Hollywood film that very precisely shows what this is about. And this is the film uh, Final Fantasy. Has anyone seen it? It's 
Basically, the story is, is about a, a, a human couple. She's a scientist, he's, I think, a soldier. And the planet is completely destroyed by alien attaching spirits who suck out the life force of every, every living being on this planet. And basically, everything is already destroyed on, on planet Earth. And uh, this woman is, she's a shaman and she's collecting animal spirits, kind of finding the last surviving animals to pick up their spirit. And then they go to the place where the meteorite came down and find a black goo-like substance. And they manage to infect the alien black goo with the information field of Mother Earth. And then kind of Mother Earth manages to conquer the alien information field, healing the entire planet. So th this is basically, I, I, I do not know who wrote the script for this film. But there is an extreme deep knowledge because exactly the setup that is described in the film is the setup that is basically ruling the entire planet since 16,000 years, giving us this type of duality, giving us demons that for me appear to as the lost souls of a biosphere that self-destroyed and came here as a swarm of meteorites. So basically, the, this is the, the, the liquid brain of a different planet brought here by intention because the, the, I, I don't believe that even if this planet exploded, we should have had like, like thousands of meteorites without black goo and maybe one with black goo. But what arrived here is only meteorites with black goo. So somebody brought this here by intention, to, by intention, infect this planet with this alien consciousness. And um, the entities black magicians are talking to must be surviving beings that are not incarnating anymore because they lost their planets, but are still there as the souls of these beings, being highly intelligent. And if you look at the pictures that people painted from, from, let's say, their visions they had from this type of reality, it seems to be a, a spider-like species that was running this planet that, that self-destroyed. So these are like, like um, insect biology, spider-like, extremely intelligent and highly developed. And these were, were called the archons in our culture. So ba basically these are, are beings that started by communicating with people that were willing to communicate. They started to, to create this black magic entanglement to humanity. And they offered us the possibility to control others. This was something that was actually not within the human nature. This, all, all these ideas of um, um, running a biosphere not based on love, but based on different emotions. This is what they, what they kind of introduced to this planet. So the first things that came from the black magic rituals was blood and fire sacrifice. Killing, ritually killing animals to gain this biophoton burst that is emitted when a being dies in pain. To, on one hand, feed the demons. This is what they needed to survive as beings. They didn't have a biology of their own, so they needed to feed on life force in a certain way. And on the other hand, some of the energy extracted by these rituals is also used to pay the people sacrificing. Because they, they want to have worldly power. So if you, if you want to have worldly power and gain profit, you need ways and means to control other people. And this painful emission of life force when you kill somebody can, if you know the game of black magic, 
can be used to force other people to, to do things that they do not want to force because facing these energies is extremely painful. And this has evolved and developed on our planet and they switched from, let's say, the biophoton burst from killing animal and humans um, it was changed to a system that is running today on torture energy. We are keeping billions of animals in concentration camp-like conditions on farms, making them suffer their entire life, killing them in cruel to cruelest ways, and then we eat them. Although this is not within our nature, normally we have long, lower intestines, we are, we are supposed to be vegetarians, maybe with a possibility to digest a little meat before we starve as a security thing. But normally we should not scoff meat from morning till evening. So this is actually all coming out of these black magic traditions being fire and blood sacrifice to produce torture energies that are utilized by the black magic community to run and rule this planet. So this is kind of the, <coughs> the way that this little incident 16,000 years ago took over our culture, took our, over our way of living. And actually everything we, we do today is part of this agenda. This is all about control. Control is giving birth to scarcity because if I want to control things, I grab them and do not leave them for others. So the others do not have access anymore. So this is possessing things, owning things, so this is money. The moment I have money, I need a political system to, to administer all the things. So, so basically, every every quality that we perceive as being normal because we were born in this actually is part of this black magic cult. If, you, if we go beyond this, we, uh, before this we, we come to, to a paradise state that is living in abundance that we all sh just share free out of love with each other. Nature is giving us so much, we could all live in abundance without any problems, but we, we are infected by these energies, we are following their ways of control, so what we basically do is, is we connect ourselves to, not to love, but to torture energy by eating what we eat. This is how this is introduced into our system. And then we let ourselves being guided and ruled by torture energy, being in resonance with this. And this is what we call politics, and this is why politics want to go to World War III, because this is blood sacrifice. This is how they work, and this is how they maintain their system. And power is part of this system. We cannot solve a problem by replacing one governor by another one because the concept of governing is black. We cannot replace a currency by a better currency because the concept of money is black. So th this is kind of, once you, you, you start to, to understand the, the ways that were introduced by this agenda, you start to realize that we are completely infected. It's like normally we, we think we are humans, but suddenly we realize, no, we are, just, we are just one big piece of cancer that is running around with the things we do and the things we live, realizing that this is not human, what became normal. And so, the, 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 so far, this is kind of the, 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 the older history of the black goo, how it came here, what it did with us. And um, this basically is a rather sad story. I, I, I would call it that one. On the other hand, once realizing what this story is, we can, we might as well consciously say, now I realize I am sick of something. 
So now I have the possibility to heal myself. And understanding what happened makes it rather easy to heal yourself. If, if I can be conscious about the two different chakra systems, I can say, okay, this is the problem, so let's develop my heart chakra. Let's put all my intention on starting to feel love in my heart chakra. If, if I realize actually the brain that once was a very, very intelligent tool to get what we wanted to have from the heart, completely took over control because the other half was erased by connecting to other things. I can realize, okay, wh where do I locate myself energetically? Every everybody has a sensation of himself being somewhere. You know, the autistic people, the dreamers, the ADS, ADHS children, they are somewhere out in the field. They are somewhere hoovering around in open space, not being identified with their body anymore. This is one option where you might find yourself as a being. The other option you might find is being 100% identified with your mind. This is where the, the black reeds want, want to have us, because this part is binary, it can be controlled. Um, some people might still be connected with their heart, being always in the middle, like being the, centered in the middle of their chest, lucky ones. There are not many of this type left on this planet. Most of the people, I guess, and this is what I experienced with, with myself, was that I can consciously take all three positions. I can hoover in the field if I want to, I can dream myself away, then I'm somewhere out in the collective, making me very sensitive to what is happening on one hand, but not being incarnated in the way it should be, actually. I can be in my head thinking, and I can consciously pull myself into the heart where I should be. And this is something we can train. We can train and learn and, and we, we can just heal ourselves by becoming aware of where we are. And this is actually what brings us back to, to the way of being we were created. If, if we pull ourselves into the heart, suddenly I, I discovered extreme interesting abilities. Once, once I managed to pull myself into the heart, I realized, or I, I've been shown by people who were a little bit more uh, advanced than me, that down here it is possible to decide. In a way, I have never decided things before. Like, like the doctors say, we are split in the middle, we have the consciousness and we have the subconsciousness, and the sub subconsciousness is not visible to us. This is bullshit. This is what the doctors say. The subconsciousness is not visible to us because it is so ugly that we don't want to have a look at it. This is all the crap we've been pushing away for hundreds of incarnations because these are things we did we do not want to cope with. We do not want to have a look at this. So all the evil, all the dirt, all the ugly things are pushed away and became what doctors call the subconsciousness. There is no beauty to, to, to be found over there. But there is a lot of spiritual growth that can be found down there if we clear that mess up. So what, what we do have is, for example, the possibility to, to identify with the heart, to, to pull yourself into the heart chakra, and then to consciously decide to feel this again. I can go down here and say, I feel my pain. And when, when I do this from the chest, immediately I do feel my pain. I do feel my anger. I do feel the evil that I lived. So this is kind of the, the door to, to reconquer the subconsciousness. And this is something everybody can do with himself. And this makes us conscious beings again, fully conscious beings. And the trick is, like, like the, the straight emotions are, can be directly accessed. Most of the people are full of fears, subconscious fears, and a fear is always a door. 
If fear appears, you can decide, I enter the fear as a portal. And then you're thrown into your fears, you feel them, and if you don't pull back, behind the fear you find a topic. So it's just a kind of a door to enter, to clear up whatever is behind, and you cannot know in advance what you will find. Normally it's a big surprise, and normally the fear of the fear or the fear of the emotion is much, much worse than the thing you find behind that door. So we do have ways and means and possibilities to clear, completely clear ourselves, become fully conscious beings again. And this opens the second possibility, to become fully empathic again. Because empathy is the normal state of our biology. We should be connected with everything and everyone. We should feel our fellow humans, we should feel the animals we are living with, we should even feel the plants. But we cannot feel anything if we don't even feel ourselves. So becoming fully conscious again is the first step. And the second step will be, be becoming em fully empathic again. To develop the ability, not only the ability to feel other people, to develop this as a normal state of being with the inability to disconnect. And this is what the return to paradise is about. To come into a state of mind where we are not able anymore to disconnect from anything when it is in front of us. And this actually, if you, if you think about it, imagine all the people on the planet being dropped in this state of mind. What would happen? We would lose our ability to be cruel because at the moment you are cruel, you suffer yourself. We would lose our ability to destroy this planet because we would feel the suffering we cause by destroying. And most of the people kind of hope that we might one day become intelligent enough to, to stop destroying. This is what I, I find out there with the, with the most, most of the people. Hope that kind of being rational will save us. And I, I really believe that this is um, the wrong way. This will never happen. Because it does not include feeling what we do. And as long as we are not forced to feel what we cause, we will cause harm because it's easy. And I haven't, I, I've never, I've seen, seen single people who were rational enough to kind of control themselves, but this is not a solution. This is sad, in a way. Um, so th this is like the, the path that becomes visible when we think about how can we return to paradise? And this is, in a way, it's not an easy one. It's not an easy path because first we need to go through our own bloodshed to realize what we have done during the time and what we are still doing to this planet today. We need to feel what we are doing to this planet. And if you, if you should at, at a certain point decide to take that as the first step of empathy. After, if you clear yourself, become fully conscious and then say, I feel the suffering of Mother Earth. This connects you to the, to the collective field of this planet. And then you will feel what we do to Mother Earth. And this is extremely painful what we do. We, we kind of took most of their cuties, all these little animals, we, we took them and put them to prison and make them suffer. This is not nice, but this is what we do, and this is what we decide that it should be done whenever we go to the supermarket and buy a piece of meat. And we can do this because we do not feel the consequences of our own do doings. So. Turning back into, into the other direction first means to accept 
accept that we have to go through a phase that is painful, but actually it is our pain that we have to carry because we produced it. This is about accepting your karma out of free will, in a way. And afterwards, it, it's getting better. Once, once you can, or once enough people are willing to, to, to carry this burden and to accept that this is what we have to feel at this point of history, things can improve, things can get better. And um, I, I can just say that I, I really, really hope that enough people will wake up to this truth, will just invest the time and the effort to clear themselves and to become conscious beings of this planet again. And then I can promise there will be a lot of beauty, unfelt beauty in this way of living that actually we all, we all wish to have. I, I, I'm 100% sure everyone would love to return to this state of being an, emotion, being an emotional being, feeling the full spectrum of life, joy, love, compassion. Everything is actually there. It is, it, it is accessible. Um, but you cannot, you cannot kind of pick out the nice feelings and try to push away the ugly ones. And I can just say this from, from my own experience. Once you, you rediscover this emotionality, every emotion is welcome because feeling is something so beautiful. And this is how we were made. This is how, how we were created. This is what we actually should should or can return to if, if, if we want to. And uh, yes, yeah, sad enough, uh, society is still a little bit far away from this uh, point of returning. Um, what, we, what we observe at the moment is um, Actually, on, on, on field level, if, if, you, if, you, if you try to understand the, the, the basic positions, um, we, we used to believe that everything is about good and evil. And um, if, if I look at reality now, I have to say that actually we have three positions that try to to gain space. This is good, evil, and control. Um, and this has to do something with um, the field symmetries of our chakras. If, if, if you look at um, um, the, the Asian knowledge of, of the colors and the, the symbols, the um, drawings con connected to chakras. We have binary fields here, we have um, rectangular fields down there. So these are the things that go with 90 degree and 180 degree angles. This is all about this morphogenetic system that is driven by the control agenda. This is actually the, the, um, the influence of the alien black goo that as a biosphere is connected to binary beings, being driven only by binary and rectangular fields. And this is kind of one, one biological blueprint that actually has influence but does not belong to our planet. This is why all the um, attempts to control us, if you, if you look into, the, this was actually the, the main topic I was working on, if you look into the concept of mind control, if you look into transhumanistic technologies that are designed for mind control. Everything is blue and red. They're trying to control 
the thoughts and the sexuality. And if you look into the field structures they are using, um, it is all rectangular. I can, I can show you a few examples from the uh, environmental analysis we've, we've been doing for the last years, like, like the one that is up now. Uh, we do have sometimes black goo in rainwater. Somebody is trying to spread the substance among people. Um, we do have a no door opener um, that is basically, if, if I say that, that, that everything we feel and think is annihilated light exchanged within our DNA clusters. There are substances in the rain that are breaking up this annihilation that kind of take a binary wave set of biophotons that go like this from DNA to DNA and then the substances come in between and suddenly the two beams break up, turn into visible light to kind of be able to access our biophoton system from outside by having the same substances up and down converting frequencies. Basically, we are light, visible light, within the spectrum that is visible. So what we have is like, like a lot of microwave technology that is brought into the body, taken by these substances in the picture, being up-converted within the body into visible light, because the microwave can penetrate, the visible light cannot penetrate. So they need to have the signals going in being upconverted up by little piezo crystals to reach our light body as a controlling signal. Um, um, there is this concept of uh, nanobots where you have the same piezo crystal. It is, it, it's, it's a kind of uh, designed picture. It looks a little bit like a robot, but actually if you go to the concept, um, how they are created, you have a piezo crystal in the center that is forming a neuronal knot within our brain, entangling to the nervous system, being able to convert microwave frequency to signals of the, ner of the nervous system. This is how they, they try to, to get into our brain. This is actually the concept that led to the mad cow disease. Um, in the 80s where they, they did the first experiments of how much do you need of these substances to get access to the brains of, of beings. And they overdid it a little bit. So they had a lot of casualties among the, the British cattle. Now it is kind of balanced, so we are all connected by this interface. And only a few of us die of uh, Kreuzfeld-Jakob, which is the human form of the mad cow disease, when something with the immune system is not working properly. So this is one of the technologies that they use within this control agenda. Um, this was the, the Morgellon fungus I researched as a disease is also like, like a possibility to, to bring little antenna systems the hollow fibers of the mycelium bringing an antenna system that self-assemble with um, 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 qu quantum dot liquids, which are um, colors that also up and down convert microwave radiation to visible light. So we have light like shining little fibers within our system that also produce DNA readable light and read out DNA light transfer and transform it back into readable uh, electromagnetic signatures that can be detected from outside. So all kinds of technologies around and actually I, I wanted to introduce all this to show you one picture that is um, showing the overall concept. This is a drop of rain with one more gallon fiber and then the other crystals around And Here you can see the rectangular structure of the mind control field that is applied using different parts of this overall system. Um, so we're breathing this in and actually this is 
the last years before we are completely falling to the concept of control being turned into bio-robots that will never ever again have the chance to access their heart because they are fully dominated by thought and sexuality because this is what is possible to control due to the field structure. So th this is just I, I do not like to scare people in a way. S Solvent Green? Yeah. Yeah. Th this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw it, but it's, it's a long time ago. This is. I, I don't like to, to, to scare people or to, to say that basically territory is already lost. But if we do not react, if we do not turn around and say goodbye to this control agenda on all levels, at the moment, they are kind of in power and they, they are running this planet. And th there's, no, there's no taste in, in kind of falling for duality again and trying to fight them. We need to clear up ourselves. And this is all that needs to be done. The moment we center ourselves in the heart chakra, no binary field can control us. Because the moment they try to do so, we realize that this is an external signal. We still will sense it, but we will sense it as if like, oh, somebody is trying to induce a thought into my brain. And then mind control does not work, and then there's no chance for them to turn us into bio-robots. Um, I know probably this question is. Can I ask you a question regarding when, where's the start of this? Because to, to be open empathically to everything is quite difficult in this one world. You get overwhelmed. So where, where can people start? What's the starting point? Um, the starting point is uh, to become fully conscious again which means to feel yourself and to, to be able to, to come to this point of feeling yourself including the subconscious parts. Uh, the first thing that is very very good to, to relearn or rediscover is this ability to take responsibility by deciding. And this can be done only in your heart. You cannot decide things with your brain and expect that it works. The brain is just ba 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 talking, but it's not doing anything on field level. The heart is the center of power, and if you decide in your heart things concerning yourself, the change comes immediately. Let's say you haven't felt something for a long time and you lost access to the feeling. You go to your heart and you say, I feel this again, and it will take you immediately. So this is where our power is. This is where our ability to be self-responsible lies, within the heart chakra, identifying with it completely, visualizing where is my center. Once you find, find your center, pull it down here, and then speak out of your heart to yourself. And whatever you say out of this position happens. And this is a, a miracle I did not expect. You know, I, I, I really was I, uh, believing, like everybody else, if I want to solve my problems, I need to go to a psych psychiatrist for 20 years. Let them fumble around in me. It's nonsense. All I need to solve my problem is to go here and decide that they are gone. And it works. It's, it's incredible. And we've been taught for, for generations that we are victims and cannot take responsibility for ourselves. This is nonsense. We, we can. It is possible. And from there it is first just feeling yourself. 
again. These are the first steps to take. And this is all within our possibilities. And once we learned to feel ourselves again, empathy comes on its own. And if it doesn't come also, you can decide on this. I might, I spent quite, quite a while experimenting with myself. I pulled back from public for like nine, nine months and kind of the topic was uh, uh, researching the morphogenetic fields. And it is, it is possible to decide to be empathic with basically everything. I got curious in the different, in the different um, um, collective fields of different countries. Like, how is Syria? Let's go to civil war with Syria. Deciding, I feel the Syrian collective field. And then you go into their anger, pain, suffering, being empathic with it. I, I, I just got curious about other countries. I, I decided, uh, let's, let's check what Japan is about in the moment. I was expecting many, many things, but what I found was, was not exactly what I expected. I, I just went into empathy with the Japanese people and it, it kind of flushed me down into a very old history dating back to the times of Atlantis when I realized actually the, the Atlantean troops, it all came in pictures and emotions. The Atlant Atlantean troops after Atlantis went down uh, had no country to go to and they were dispersed on the planet in war with all different other countries. So they decided to settle down somewhere else and they took the Japanese islands, killed all the men and took the women as sex slaves. And this is in the collective consciousness of Japan till today because they were so isolated that this trauma signature was given from generation to generation. This is why the, the men still scream at their own children as if this is a military drill. And um, if you look into the, the sexuality of this country, the women still moan as if they are violated and taken by force, which is not the case today, but, but the entire energetics is coming from this initial tra traumatizing event of being conquered by an Atlantean military personnel killing all the men and taking the women against their will. And th th this is things you can, you can kind of discover once you, 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 you train your abilities to, to consciously go into empathy with things. Um, you can go into these fields and sensing them is the first thing. And then th the second possibility is to take over responsibilities for these fields. Let's say you, you, you attach to a, a field of a country that is 24 hours prior to civil war. You will find all the anger there. You will find all the hatred, all the pain, everything that is too much that wants to discharge in a civil war. And you can absorb these emotions, in, take them into your heart and let them disappear into open space. And you will find that 24 hours later there is no civil war. And this is exactly how our planet is administered by the black magic community. They exactly know that it needs trauma energies to kickstart a war. And if you look at the latest history, it needed two million refugees from Iraq brought into Syria to kickstart a civil war in Syria. Syria was an extremely peaceful country. They didn't intend to go to any war. It was multicultural, it was peaceful, loving people, Muslims and Christians sharing the same holy places with no problem having a Muslim in a church praying and, or the, the other way around. It was extremely peaceful. It needed the traumatized energies of two million Iraqi refugees 
to kickstart a civil war over there. So they brought them there. And then they brought like, I don't know how many million traumatized refugees to Europe to kickstart a civil war in Europe because we would not kill each other. No way, unless you introduce trauma energies into the field by bringing traumatized people into the field. And we cannot chuck those people out because they are victims of themselves. They were victimized in their home countries by us, basically, and now this energy is brought here. We cannot chuck them out, cannot, cannot send them back to countries where basically they will be killed. But what we can do is we can discharge the trauma energy from the fields by taking it in and releasing it. And then the other community has lost the game because they will not manage to kickstart their wars anymore. And um, this is something everyone can do according to, let's say, the, the capacities of his being. Some people can take care of a family, some people can take care of a village, some people can take care of a city, and so other people can take care of entire countries because of the, the size of their emotional capacity. They, they, they have within themselves. This is something everyone needs to find out for himself. How big are you? How much can you contain emotion-wise? And then we can go to peaceful acts within the morphogenetic field structure and maintain this planet as a peaceful place. And this can be, can be done consciously. It's easy to learn. All you need is the, the courage to experiment with yourself and some time to spend with yourself, losing the fear of what you might find over there. If you have a look into yourself, emotional look into yourself. And this is actually the, the, the only way back I know. And the alternative is not very beautiful. The alternative is to continue falling to this control agenda. And then we will have a planet that actually has no space for decisions. We will have a central AI controlling all beings, giving them like an, uh, a strange field of possible nice experiences that is predefined, everything is predefined and predictable within this AI. And the experience of other planets shows that this actually leads into self-destruction because biology was meant to be different and you cannot oppose, uh, um, imprint one of these dual system on a trinary system hoping that the trinary system will survive. Mm. So th th this is kind of the, I, I, I don't know, is it, was, was it possible for you to, to kind of get the big picture of what is happening here? Or does it somehow collide somewhere with your experience or is something, uh, d didn't I go deep enough into details here or there to, to enable you to grab what it's about? It's basically it, it covers everything we are doing, and this this it can be understood in a way. This is one possibility, but it also can be felt, and and feeling it makes the difference. I remember it, it was a thought when I realized that actually eating meat is blood and fire sacrifice. I realized this actually for the first time when. Um, um, the mad cow disease was on in the 80s and uh, the authorities in England decided to burn all the killed cows, um, burn them to smoke, which was stupid because of the, the transmissible agent causing 
the mad cow disease. It was not a virus and not bacteria. It was these crystalline little piezo crystals causing the disease. And you, you cannot destroy them by burning them. They, uh, actually, the, the way they found out was uh, taking the brain of an infected cow, burning it at 800 degrees to ash, and then injecting uh, the ash into the brain of a second animal and it was showing exactly the symptoms of the mad cow disease. So it was proven that this is crystalline. And still the authorities decided to burn all animals. And I was just sitting there looking at this, and I, I could feel this is fire sacrifice. Somebody here is doing black magic rituals on big scales. Um, so... This is where, where, you, where you can start to, to put your own emotional abilities into observing. And at a certain point I realized, okay, my, my girlfriend was vegetarian. I was convinced by her with good arguments to try this as well. And at a certain point, when, when I was free of these torture energies that we take in by eating meat, I was just... Like every, every week I was going to Berlin City and I really enjoyed, always enjoyed street life, especially in the, in the more colored quarters of Berlin. And then I was in one of these quarters and I was looking at the street life and I saw like 20 different restaurants with humans sitting in front of the restaurants at tables on the street, all of them scoffing dead animals. And for the first time, it, it kind of completely went into me emotionally that this is hundreds of people busy with black magic rituals, sitting there, doing something that from their biology they should not do. And the, the emotional impact was extreme at that moment because I, I could feel what they are doing. I could feel that this is a ritual. I could see the energies or, or feel the energies that were in the food going into the people. I could see the aggressiveness of the people. I could see the pain within the people that they take in by eating this. I could see how, it was how this was changing their personality into something we are not. And actually, it, it, it is about developing the ability to feel all this, because only if you feel it, you can react to it in a, in a way that is transporting the message to others. You know, it's just stating, yes, this is the fact, and giving the information. It, it will not inspire others to open themselves for being emotional. What, what does inspire others is being emotional and letting them feel, like, like igniting their empathy for the moment, letting them feel that being emotional, that there's nothing bad about it. That it might be painful, but still, feeling pain is still better than not feeling anything. And this is something we, we can just live and um, we can inspire other people to do so. And this will bring healing. It's the only way for, for, for the moment, this is the only way I can, I can visualize, I can see that will bring healing to this planet because this is exactly the disease we're suffering from. Any questions or suggestions where to continue with? I, I don't have the, the time now on the computer here. So, so ten, 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 ten minutes. minutes. Any questions or... Uh, so.
Um, you will need the mic, sorry. Sorry. Do you suggest people take good black goo based on the experience that you had with the, your connectivity being restored? Mm. I, I decided to trade the globally. They're available. It's, it's a company from Austria called biopure.eu biopure.eu and they, they trade black goo globally and these black goo globally they, they contain both information fields of alien type and earth type black goo. So basically they are opening up the the physical field of duality within us, giving us the po position, the, the, the possibility to position ourselves into the direction of connecting to Mother Earth. This still is a conscious decision that needs to be done. You cannot take it globally and hope that they are going to do the work for you. They are not. It's just like a door opener that is opening the field in which you can take the decision. And I do not recommend to take them. Um, I just offer the possibility to take them uh, because once you open this field, everything pops up that connects people to this dark agenda. So if you had like former life experiences, um, having lived one of the life with dark energies as a witch or a witcher, sacrificing children, all these topics will automatically pop up the moment you take in the, uh, the globally. Um, I've seen funny things happening. Uh, this black magic agenda is all about entanglement qu on quantum level. So if you, if you are entangled in a way to the binary fields by anything, it will show. I remember a woman that was close to raped by a black magician and he, he managed to hold her on the ground with his hand while he tried to do so. And when she took the globally, suddenly his hand appeared as a red spot on her skin from an event that was 15 years dating back. I have seen a woman that just took the globally in her hand. She didn't even take it. She just had it in her hand. And she turned pale, couldn't stand anymore, and started to shiver, not knowing at all what happens to her. And um, it, it, it happened while I, I was around, so I, I took her aside and tried to, on, on empathic level, look into her what's happening with her, and I could see her in one of her, of, of her past lives being an extremely evil woman, something 17th century in, in a little town in Belgium. And I, I could see all the pictures from her former lifetime popping up in her system. So this can have very strong effects, uh, but the there's on, on, on the website we run, there's a forum where people exchange their experience with these globalists. And it, it can really be everything. Some people get, get healing on physical levels. Some people um, dive into their own darkness for six weeks, getting close to suicide, being faced with what they lived before, um, until clearing comes until healing comes. So it, it can take some time. Some people do not feel anything. Where I say, okay, either they are already completely entangled to Mother Earth and there's nothing to heal. They never were in contact with a binary agenda during their incarnation, so there's nothing to be healed. One possibility. The other one, they are completely binary beings that do not react in a way that anything wants to be healed. So they sit there in their arrogance and say, okay, I control everything, this did not do anything with me, I want my money back. We had all this, all, all different possible reactions coming on, um, on these globally. So I, what I recommend is to, to test whether it is good to take them or not. Like with a kinesiologue, kinesiological testing or who doesn't have somebody to do it, just take them 
onto your heart and feel if you if it feels like being pulled towards them or if you feel re rejected by them. I, I just so don't understand the, why. Um, so th it, this it would still be mixed with the alien goo because isn't that proven to be deleterious for us? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the, not. You said that what, the, the global one is a mixture of the two different types of goo. Yes. Why, why include the alien goo? Um, Since we, we know what, is, what it's up to. The, the initial concept of um, healing a disease with the informational pattern of the disease, oh, okay, okay. like hom homeopathy works. Okay. And it was so successful in, in many cases that we decided to, to keep this within the concept. No, maybe I would like to I would like to, to close with one actually good or beautiful news. Um, at a at a certain point when when we were dealing with these with this topic, um, with the attempt to to move things to heal things on collective field level, um, there was an incident when. Um, we, we introduced seven chakra consciousness, consciously introduced the seven chakra consciousness into the binary fields, kind of building a bridge in between the two. And at that point, Mother Earth got involved and she said, uh, now I got access. I'm taking over and doing the rest. And she was busy for three days to completely reprogram all black goo deposits on planet Earth that were in contact with groundwater or soil. She was not talking about the, the part of the black goo that was in technical use by within black magic facilities, quantum computers, this might have been protected, but all the resources that were still on ground level in contact with groundwater, soil, stone, rock. She went through everything and reprogrammed it, upgraded it to her seven chakra system. So what we can say at the moment is that the core problem of the deterioration from paradise is solved for this planet. This is already completely done and freed and cleared and healed. What we do have are bad habits. And what we do have is our, mom, our recent consciousness field that is still filled with a lot of dark energies from the time when we were kind of fed with this dark instincts. So we are still living this in a way as a collective, but there is no inspiration left to continue this ugly game, which I would say is something that makes me hope that we, will be, we should be able to very quickly let go from the bad habits, because there's nothing left that is backing them up. And actually this was maybe, as a, as a last sentence, this was exactly the thing described in the film Final Fantasy. This is exactly what happened. I was just curious to ask what days that was, what the three days, could you give us the, the date? Or it does not matter at all? And um, I wanted to ask you about the date. Could you give us what three days there were, there was, or is it not relevant at all? You, because you mentioned that it, the process of um, Mother Earth working ah, okay. on the black goo, it took three days. Yeah. So is it recent? No, that, that was, let me think, 2013, 2014. Um, I, I don't exactly remember the date. It was end of 2014, beginning of 2015. So this is like one and a half years ago that it happened. So we, we are out of this mess already for quite a while. 
And I, I don't know why it took three days, this is what she said, and it was impossible to, to reach any other entity on the astral level because everybody was extremely busy during the three days. Um, we dealt a lot with, with shamans traveling these realms frequently and um, it was completely impossible to, to get anyone to communication during the three days because everything was a mess up there because she went through the fields and did it. And I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't exactly know, but I, I, can see, I can see a major difference in the ways things develop on the planet since then. Uh, no, nobody would have expected Assad to survive. And he's still in power. Uh, if you look at the war between Saudi Arabia and Yemen, miracles happen. There's a ground offensive by Saudi Arabia. The king says, now we, we just ran over Yemen. And 10,000 Saudi soldiers pack their stuff and leave home in a country where people are still beaten to death on the streets if they don't follow the rules and the wishes of their king. And um, <clears throat> I, ha I have the strong feeling that things of this quality can happen now. Before it was impossible. Mm. The organic sphere, but still, uh, maybe within those that are practicing the black magic and the occult, they still retain this uh, alien black goo. What capacity and influence do they have, you know, in versus mm. those that are resisting and trying to clear this? Mm. We, we, we managed to locate four quantum computers run on black goo. And the way I understood the technology, it is like artificial ley lines. It's huge piping systems with pipes completely filled with black goo in underground facilities. Or single cubes filled with black goo. This is a form they as a symbol it's been used and as a technology it's been used. Uh, and in, in a way they, they must use the black goo to introduce neuro-linguistic programming into the consciousness field. This is how I, how, how I understood the, the way these quantum computers work. And you, you, can, you can see many black remains in our language. Like, um, take the word no or not. In, in physics, it does not exist. If you go to the, to the street as a peaceful human and say no more war, no more bloodshed, the quantum vacuum is reading more war and more bloodshed. And this is the type of neuro-linguistic neuro programming that actually was first given... Um, I don't know the, the English, uh, English term, the ten, the ten laws given, given by the wrong gods. Do not kill. This is already the first neurolinguistic programming and I wouldn't be surprised if the stones it was written on were made of black goo. There's no hint to this but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and th there were like, like four four quantum computers, one in Vatican City, like one and a half kilometers south of Vatican center, one in the city of London, one in um, Germany in a World War II facility, Mittel, Mittelberg. Um, this was the one that we, we got detailed plans from. 
and the eyewitnesses who went down underground to, to have a look at the facility. And one which we had the, the least information was somewhere between New York and Washington DC in the underground facilities. And this is, this is basically the, the part that could not be reached and healed yet because it is run in technical facilities. The other part that is not yet healed completely is connected to the second thing that was brought in together with the black goo. And these are the arcs of the covenant. We had um, a record of four arcs known. One is the box of the Pandora, the only one that is claiming the content in a correct way. The box of the Pandora, the Ark of the Co Covenant connected to the Jewish people. Then there's a very similar story connected to the Irish people. Also being part of the pharaonic lines and then taking the Ark back to Ireland, having the sea split into two halves when they crossed the channel to Great Britain. All these stories exist also in, a, in, a, in an Irish tradition. This arc is at the moment hidden in North London. The one of the Jewish people is somewhere close to Israel hidden. And then we have the arc of Gabriel that was hidden in Saudi Arabia until it was found last September. And they made a deal with the Russian military to remove it from the city because they had plasma discharge and it killed a lot of people, so the Russians took it onto one of their military bases in, Ant in, Ant in Antarctica. And how these one worked um, can be seen in the British setup. It is all connected to the stone circles. And beyond the stone circles, you have like uh, underground facilities from Stone Age that form antenna systems. All antennas are binary. You have the clover leaf to control sexuality and you have the binary spiral as one basic form of tunnel systems for mind control. So you have a set of 200 resonating antennas with identical antenna geometry all over Great Britain. And in the center of one, there's an arc. And the arc, this is actually the second half of the picture, what came here. You have the black goo, like the brain liquid of a traumatized planet. And then you have the arc that contains a crystal with the ability to be charged with bioenergetics. So you have kind of the, the, the brain and the life force with all the informational content from the same planet brought here. And the opening of the box of the Pandora was like discharging the life force of the traumatized planet into our planetary system to kickstart trauma processes to kickstart self-destruction. It's always exactly the same concept, whether you go to, to Syria with the Iraqi refugees, you need trauma energies to be introduced into a healthy system to kickstart self-destruction. Always the same concept. And one beautiful thing that still can be happen, I, I see it happening in some kind of future is that these arcs are removed out of the resonating antenna systems. Because if you, if you look at world politics, there are actually three sources of evil that can be located on this planet. One is the city of London, which we have all the colonial disasters coming from, from the British, within the British colonies. We have the radical Islam coming from Saudi Arabia, and we have fascism coming from Israel. So the three sources of the evil are 100% connected to the geographic positions of these remaining arcs. And this cannot be a coincidence. So we should remove this trauma energy somewhere else fire it back into outer space or do whatever can be done with them. 
um, this is kind of the second half that still is in, pos in position, although the black goo is already healed and taken over. The trauma energy is something that can also be introduced into Mother Earth's energetic system because she has the capacity of, of uh, pain, fear, and all the negative emotions. So it's not, you do not need the alien black goo to process these energies. Trauma is trauma. So this is something that is still waiting for a solution. Okay, I think time is over. If there are no more questions. <laughs>